Jonah, Jonah, oh Jonah, Jonah, are you in there? Oh, I hope not. Oh, ooh, ouch, those look sharp. Well, that's got to be the wrong fish. Well, I guess I'll just sit here on this rock and wait around and see if Jonah shows up and uh, check with him later. In the meantime, I guess I'll just read the story about Jonah. One day, God told the prophet Jonah, I have a message for you to take to the people of Nineveh. You know how cruel and wicked they are. You must tell both the king and the people that unless they are sorry for their wrongdoings and change their ways, I'm going to punish them. Jonah did not want to go and do as God said. He was ready to preach to God's own people in Israel. But he did not see why he should go to a foreign nation. And what a nation. Nineveh was the capital of the great Assyrian Empire. Everyone knew the cruelty of the Assyrians. They showed no mercy to those they conquered. If I go to Nineveh and tell them about God, Jonah thought, they may be sorry for their sins and tell God so. And then he will forgive them and decide not to punish them. They deserve to be punished without any early warning from me. Jonah decided to get as far from Nineveh and God as he could. He set off for the seaport of Joppa, where ships tied up, waiting to sail to places near and far. One Jonah found was due to sail to Tarshish, a land so far away that the land dwellers of Israel heard of it only from sailors' tales. Jonah paid the fare and climbed on board. Tired out with his long walk and his struggle against God, he went below to sleep. When he woke up, he would be far away from the impossible mission that God had set before him. Jonah soon fell fast asleep. The shouts of the crew as they got ready to sail and cast off the ropes didn't wake him up. At first, the gentle rise and fall of the ship on the sea soothed his tired body and mind. Before they had gone far, a strong wind began to whip up the water. The waves rose higher and higher, then came crashing against the sides of the ship and breaking over the deck. The sailors worked hard with all their strength to keep the ship on course. In desperation, they threw some of the cargo overboard to make the ship easier to control. But the ship's strong timber seemed thin as matchwood in the teeth of the storm. Soon they knew it would break up and they would all drown. The terrified crew began to call out to their various gods for help. The captain, he went below and found to his astonishment that Jonah was still asleep. He shook him by the shoulder urgently and shouted, Wake up! Pray to your gods! If this storm goes on, we're all lost. On deck, the sailors talked and planned. I reckon we've got a villain on board, one said. The gods are angry with him and have sent this storm to punish him. Let's draw lots to find out who's to blame. The rest agreed. The names of everyone on board were written down and one name drawn out. The name was Jonah. Own up, Jonah, they begged. Tell us who you are and what you've done to bring such trouble on all of us. I am a Jew, Jonah answered. I worship the God who made heaven and earth. You're right. I have sinned against God. I am his prophet, and I have disobeyed his orders, and I am running away from him. That's terrible, the sailors exclaimed. But how can we put things right and stop this storm? By throwing me overboard, Jonah had said bravely. The sailors were kind men. They didn't want to, Jonah to drown. So they made one last attempt to get the ship on land by taking to the oars. But they were helpless against the force of the storm. They would have to take Jonah at his word. Please, Jonah's God, they prayed. Don't blame us for throwing him out. We don't want to harm him. But it's our only hope. And it was you who sent the storm. 
Then they picked up Jonah and tossed him over the side. At once the wind began to die down. The waves subsided. And soon the sea grew calm. The crew knelt on the deck in awe and prayed again to Jonah's God. We believe that you are the only true God. From now on, we will serve and worship you alone. That's what they promised. Jonah had shown great courage when he told the sailors to throw him into the raging sea. But as he began to fall from the side of the ship straight into the angry, foaming water, he felt terrified. Down, down, down he went. Green fingers of seaweed caught at his neck and his feet. He heard a roaring in his ears. He felt his mouth and lungs fill with water and prayed to God to rescue him. A huge shape loomed up from the depths of the ocean floor. And the next moment, Jonah found himself inside the most enormous fish he could have ever imagined. He had not drowned. He was still alive. Jonah did not think about what might happen next. He felt full of thankfulness to God. He was certain that the arrival of the big fish was just as much God's doing as the violent storm. Thank you, God, Jonah sang out in the suffocating darkness. You have saved me from death. On the third day, the fish swam close to land. At God's command, it brought Jonah up safely onto the beach. Go to Nineveh, Jonah, God said for the second time. Jonah had learned his lesson. He obeyed. Well, Jonah had plans of his own, but God had different plans for him. And we have to learn, too, that God's plans aren't necessarily our plans. So we have to be listening to what God has to say to us and what God has planned for us. It's a great story. There's more to it, but we'll talk next time on Joe's Story Time. Bye-bye. And I hope Jonah comes out soon or the other fish shows up. <laughs>